Hey guys, it's Bub here. Exactly one week ago at WWDC, macOS 12 Monterey was released to the public. A lot of the features that we see in macOS Monterey are very similar to the ones that we saw on the iOS 15 beta. Of course, this update is nowhere as big of an update as Big Sur was, however, it's still a welcome update with a lot of new features. So in this video, we'll be checking out each new feature and seeing how it works in macOS Monterey. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Probably the biggest update of macOS Monterey is FaceTime. We saw this update first on iOS 15, and of course, Apple brought it to macOS 12. So these really are the same features that iOS got, but in a different form factor. You have SharePlay, which allows you to share your screen, music, movies, and TV shows directly to the person you're FaceTiming. You have spatial audio, which allows individual voices to be heard from each person on your screen. So if you have someone on the top left of your screen, it'll sound like that person is in the top left of the screen. It's not just one soundtrack. You have voice isolation microphone modes. Grid view has also been brought to macOS. There's portrait mode, which is taken directly from the iPhone camera app. However, it is powered by Apple's M1 chip, so it's not on Intel Macs. And there's FaceTime links for scheduling, and you can also now invite anyone to FaceTime. So if your friends have a Windows PC or an Android, you can create a link and go ahead and send that link to them. They'll go ahead and put it in the browser, and then they can join your FaceTime just like they have a real Mac. Honestly, it's pretty cool, and I really recommend trying this out, especially on a beta, because it's simply one of the coolest features of this WWDC keynote. Messages on macOS also got an update, it now has shared with you as seen on iOS 15, and photo collections, which in the actual message, it allows you to swipe through each image that was shared, and also you have a grid view, which allows you to see each image that was sent to you, which honestly is pretty cool. These are little minor features, but overall, this is a welcome change. Besides FaceTime, Safari probably had the other biggest change in macOS 12. The tab bar now takes less space, and it's supposed to change color depending on what website you're on. However, for me, it didn't change color. I'm not sure if this was because I was in dark mode, however, it simply did not change color. Floating tabs are combined with the search field, so as we can see here, each tab moves with the search field, which is really weird at first, but eventually it gets normal. Tab groups have been added, just like it is on the Chrome on Android. Pretty cool, and I really like how Safari handles it. You can access your tab groups on any Apple device because they automatically sync. So if you make a tab group on your iPad, it'll automatically show up on your iPhone and your Mac, and if you make a group on your Mac, it'll show up on your iPhone and your iPad. Honestly, pretty cool stuff, and it really makes things easier. Easy. Focus is another iOS 15 feature that is introduced in macOS 12. You can choose a focus in the control center and it allows you to get work done when you're in the zone and it allows you to silence notifications easily. You can create your own focus as seen here which is pretty cool. You can change which apps are allowed to actually send you notifications. Your focus status is shared in messages, so in messages it'll say this person is not receiving notifications, and enabling a focus on your Mac will enable it on every Apple device. So if you enable do not disturb on your Mac, it'll enable it on your iPhone, your iPad, your Apple Watch, anything like that so you don't get any notifications. Quick Notes is something similar to what we saw in Microsoft Edge in 2013. You can write ideas wherever you are no matter what you're doing. You can add links, tags, and mentions so you can access important information quicker. In supported apps, you can also link to a Quick Note, and of course they appear in their own section in the Notes app. So on the macOS Monterey preview website, I simply highlighted a word and right-clicked and clicked Add New Quick Note. And now, whenever we go back to that website, that word will automatically be highlighted and there will be a reference to our quick note. So no matter where we are, we can always go back here and it will always be highlighted unless you delete that note. Honestly, this is a really cool feature and I don't know if this syncs to your iPhone, but if this synced to your iPhone, I think that would be even cooler. On the topic of notes, the notes app also got an update. The notes app now has an activity view which allows you to see what other people have added to a shared note, which is honestly amazing. You can now mention people inside of notes, so if you shared a note with someone, you can at mention them, which is also really nice to see, hey, you need to work on this part of the note. And you can add tags to notes, so if you're looking for stuff and you want to specifically tag it with hashtag work, hashtag school, hashtag home, you can just type hashtag and your tag, and it'll show up under the tag section on the left hand side of your notes app. Pretty cool stuff, nice for organization, and nice for collaboration. Universal control is probably the most interesting feature in this build. You can use one keyboard and mouse and trackpad and it works seamlessly between your iPad and your Mac. It connects with more than just one Mac or iPad and there's no setup required. 
You just simply put your devices next to each other, and they talk to each other, and everything works. I'm not entirely sure how this works, if it's over Bluetooth or even powered by the M1 chip. I don't have devices to test this with because you require a 2016 or newer MacBook Pro. However, overall, this is really cool, and I would love to see how many devices you can actually put next to each other. If you can just put maybe like 15 Macs and 15 iPads and see how that works, I think that would be pretty cool. But as Craig demoed in WWDC, you can drag files off your iPad and put them in your Final Cut Pro timeline, and it works just like it's running off your local storage, which uh, this is honestly impressive, and I would love to see more of this and this be brought to things like Windows, which I know Apple won't do it for Windows but maybe Microsoft will. AirPlay has also received an update. You can share content from other Apple devices directly to your Mac, so kind of using your Mac as an Apple TV, and you can also use your Mac as an AirPlay speaker. And Apple said on their website that you can kind of like have an entire room of Macs and have like surround sound. That would be kind of interesting but kind of weird considering a Mac is like $2,000, and that's really not ideal. However, I couldn't get it to work. I tried to go on my phone and AirPlay, but nothing showed up, and I couldn't figure out how to enable it on my actual Mac, but I'm not sure why it didn't work. Maybe it's because I have a 2015 MacBook Pro that's still on Intel. Maybe this is powered by M1. I'm not entirely sure, because a lot of these new macOS Monterey features require M1. Just like on iOS 15, you can interact with text inside of an image. You can click on an address and it'll open in maps, you, you can click on a phone number and it'll call that phone number, and it's really cool, however I couldn't get it to work. I'm not sure if this is a feature that requires M1, maybe it's not even implemented yet, but I couldn't get it to work. Visual Lookup is also implemented from iOS. It allows you to learn more about landmarks or really anything that it recognizes. Again, I don't think this is implemented yet, I tried to get it to work, but I really couldn't. The Shortcuts app that was added in iOS 13 has been brought onto macOS. You can create shortcuts which makes tasks easier, it automates tasks, and really makes your life on macOS easier. And sharing a simple shortcut is as easy as it is on iOS. You just simply right click and click share and you go from there. You can create your own custom scripts or you can of course use preset ones, however there is a ton of things you can do in a shortcut, like add a new calendar, format that calendar, I'm not even sure why you would need those kind of things, but it's pretty cool and the things you can do with this is really impressive. macOS Monterey also brings a new Maps app. Maps have the same new city experience as iOS, which means 3D things and really that real city immersive experience. It also shows nearby stations and transit times, which is something that could be useful on iOS. I'm not entirely sure why that would be useful on macOS, but I mean some people could use it like that. There's also an interactive globe, just like Google Earth, where you can zoom all the way out and spin around the globe. It even shows at your exact time where the sun is, so you can see what side of the Earth is receiving light and what side of the Earth is not receiving light. It's honestly really interesting, and I like this Maps update. Privacy is one of Apple's biggest things, and this macOS update is no exception. There is now a recording indicator added by the Control Center, so when we're going to go ahead and record a voice memo, watch the Control Center icon, you'll see that orange dot pop up, like the orange dot that pops up on iOS, and I assume it's the same with your camera. I'm not entirely sure I didn't test that. So you can see that little orange dot there. There's also mail privacy protection, which is the same thing that was added on iOS 15 iCloud Plus is Apple's new service, which I'm sure you've heard all about, so I'll just cut it short. It's their new subscription service that replaces the storage plans that currently exist. iCloud Private Relay is a feature you get if you subscribe to iCloud Plus. It's basically Apple's own encrypted VPN. They also have Hide My Email, which generates unique and random email addresses that forward to your inbox, so you don't have to share your real email address whenever you're signing up for something or entering something sketchy. So overall, it's the same thing that we saw on iOS, and it's the same service that we'll see across all of Apple's products. And so that is Apple's macOS 12 Monterey Developer Beta 1. Honestly, there's a lot of small features that really make macOS even better. Big Sur was a huge update, and I really didn't expect Apple to live up to Big Sur's update size. However, they did a pretty good job with Monterey, and I'm really excited to see what macOS 13, or maybe even 12.1, will bring in the future. So with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe if you're new around here, as I do all kinds of different technology videos, and last week I even did an iOS 15 video. So with that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.